We are near the bottom of the hour. You're watching CNN. I'm Brooke Baldwin. Extortion and a character assassination. That is what Paula Dean's sons are calling these accusations flying against their mother here and the fallout over her admission that she used the N-word in her past. Today they spoke exclusively on CNN's New Day. Here they were. My mother would never teach Bobby and I anything other. We're obviously a product of our environment. We care very much about our community. I'm raising two boys right now. This is ridiculous. It's, it's completely absurd to think that there's an environment of racism in our business. And it's really disrespectful to the people that we work with. We have strong, educated men and women of character that have been with us for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. To think that they would allow themselves to be in this position is simply baloney. It's ridiculous. Bobby and I are here today not to stem the tide for endorsements or any of those things. We're here to speak out for our mother's character and to say that our mother is a, a truly wonderful people that is inclusive of all people and spends a lot of her time and energies to help those people that are challenged. 25 years ago when we started our business, we had nothing. And now we've given the opportunity to help uh, nonprofits across this whole country and it means a tremendous amount to us and to do good things in, in our life and the power that we've we've been given through our media career is important to us and uh, you know we're just here to say that this uh, environment of racism that's been spoken about is could not be further from the truth Joining me now from New York, Peter Shankman, branding and social media consultant at The Geek Factory and author of Can We Do That? Peter Shankman, nice to see you, sir. Um, you. Let's just begin actually with just piggybacking off the interview we just heard. Here you have these, you know, these two sons very much, uh, you know, supporting their mother in a pretty lengthy exclusive interview here on CNN. And then, you know, along with that, we know that Paula Dean. Uh, we'll be speaking out tomorrow morning uh, for the first time public, publicly since this whole thing broke uh, on the Today Show. What do you make of all of this? What does she need to say? Well, you're looking at like almost three separate stories here. The first story is is two children sticking up for their mom. You know, it doesn't matter what your mom did. If it's your mom, you're going to stick up further. So, mm -hmm. so that that was to be expected. They were very well spoken. Uh, they made some good points. The problem is though is that they're defending this woman who it wasn't like it was heard through a friend of a friend of a friend that she said this, this was her deposition. These were her words. And the problem is, is that that's really hard to refute. It's what she said. So the best situation for her right now, you know, let her come on tomorrow morning, tell her story, then let her disappear for a while. Hmm. You know, look at, look at anyone who's ever made a comeback, Elliot Spitzer, Tiger Woods, different scenarios, granted. This was, this was you know, it's, it's one thing to sleep with someone outside your marriage, it's another thing to use that kind of talk it's a completely different story, but to come back, America has a very short attention span, hmm. and we do love a success story and a revitalization story. Let her go away for a couple of years. Maybe then she'll do some volunteer work at the, I don't know, Southern Poverty Law Center, something like that. <sighs> And then come back. But, but. That, and this, mark my words, that will happen. Okay, so but here's the but. You know, she, she is the, the kind of, she's the face, obviously, uh, of what she is cooking. You know, she not only has this, this restaurant, yep. which apparently is doing uh, you know, incredibly well in, in Savannah, she has this uh, upcoming book, which, which pre sales are going gangbusters on, on Amazon. Um, and we know, obviously, she was yanked from Food Network. It, I know you're saying she needs to go away. It, let's say she goes away for just half a minute and comes back. Do you think there, if there's any chance that Food Network gives her a job back? <clears throat> no, not right away. You've got to realize the Food Network is not doesn't care about their, their uh, fans. All the fans in the world could say, hey, we want her back. Food Network has to answer to their advertisers. And right now, the advertisers are saying, whoa, we don't want anything to do with that. The advertisers pay the bills, and the advertisers can shut off the lights. Now, that being said, everyone freaked out when Tiger Woods stepped down and went to uh, sex rehab because they said that, you know, well, he's the face of Nike. What is he going to do? Hmm. Nike hasn't really been harmed by that. You know, so it, it really is a question of time. American consumers and the American public has a very short attention span. Mm. She can go, she can come back, and she can basically say, you know what, I've, I've, I've learned my lesson, I've redeemed myself. And mark my words, it probably won't be the Food Network that brings her back. Perhaps it'll be the Cooking Channel, perhaps it'll be something similar. But, you know, she has this core fan base, mm -hmm. and we are a society that is willing to forgive if enough time has passed. Mm.
Uh, we can we can wait a little while and I can come back and, and you can say I told you so, as you call <laughs> it right here. Peter Shakeman, thank you so much for joining me. Let, let's pivot from the PR angle and let me bring in Mark Lamont Hill, professor at Columbia University and host of HuffPost Live. Professor, good to see you. Good to um, see you. So let's just begin with the fact that, uh, you know, it was Paula Deen, she was under oath, and, and she was basically asked if she has ever, in the course of her lifetime, she ever used the N-word. She answered that she had. You know, I read the, the quotes of this deposition where she said that, you know, Yes, she likely used it when she was held up at gunpoint in the 80s. Uh, said she probably used it maybe since then, but it, it was a very long time ago. Still, if it's been a long time, let's say three decades, Mark, if she's telling the truth, do you consider her racist? Uh, I'm really, you know, reluctant to go around calling people racist or not racist. Uh, my gut tells me that if you use the N-word a long time ago and use it throughout life, you probably still use it. Uh, the fact that she said that the one time she remembers using it was when someone held her up at gunpoint is a little bit suspicious to me. And it's also curious. Lots of bad things happen. Well, because, I mean, I'm, I, you're, you're not racist. If, if a black person held you up, I'm sure the N-word wouldn't come up. <laughs> I'm not anti-Semitic. If a Jewish person held me up, I, I wouldn't use an anti-Semitic word. Those words aren't in my, aren't in my reservoir of language to use mm -hmm. for people. I would just say a really bad person stuck me up. It's a, it's a different thing when, that, when you have that kind of in the chamber ready to go. That scares me a lot. Um, but also, it wasn't just that. It was the stories that people told. It was a sentiment that people had. And it was the real lack of uh, contrition in her initial apology that make me question it. I don't know what's in Paula Deen's heart. I can't say. But I'm not ready to buy that, sh that she's not racist. And I know that there's a whole nation of people who feel the same way. Then you have, as we, you know, I was talking with Peter Shankman, these two sons of hers coming on. And this one son, Jamie, told this story uh, to obviously um, counteract what much of uh, the country is thinking about her by telling the story about when he was, you know, it was the mid-70s, and he told the story about Hank Aaron. Here it was. Let me tell you a story, Chris. When I was you? a young man in 1975, before I had my tonsils taken out, uh, Henry Aaron was my first sports hero growing up. In 1974, he broke Babe Ruth's home run record by hitting 715 home runs. Before I had my tonsils taken out, I was obviously, I was seven years old. I was very nervous. My parents gave me Hank Aaron pajamas. And when they gave me these pajamas, my mom and dad told me the story of the challenges that the Hammer faced in his pursuit of this record. They told me that he's a man of character and the challenges that he overcome because of his color was unacceptable. This is a lesson that my mom and dad taught me when I was seven years old and it's a lesson that I've carried throughout my life of inclusion and to treat everyone fairly and by their character and by their own merit. And under no circumstances should you ever judge anybody for any other reason. So let's Mark Lamont Hill take him at his word. Let's take Paula Dean at, at, at her word. She was she was under oath. I mean, here we are, 2013. Can she move on from this? Can can the nation be accepting that? Yep, she used it. She hasn't in a while, and it's okay. Well, here's the thing. I I I take her whether or not I take her at her word is almost immaterial. She has a right to have a TV show. She has a right to say what she wants. She has a right to think. Uh, what she wants. So even if she is racist, I don't necessarily think that we should run around taking everyone's job because they're racist. There'd be entire networks that didn't exist if that were the case. Do you think Food but Network overreacted? No, I don't think they overreacted. I, I think the Food Network also has a right to say, we have a customer base who mm. doesn't like this or we don't want our brand attached to this kind of thing. So I think Paula Dean will land on her feet. She's very successful. She's very talented. Somebody will hire her again and a big chunk of the nation will get over it. And a big chunk of the nation right now either believes her or doesn't care. So Paula Dean will be fine. I think it speaks to a bigger question of how we think about race who we're willing to call a racism and what, or racist and what we think constitutes racism. I think it's very complex and interesting, but I think in the long term, Paula Dean is going to be fine. <laughs> you agree with Peter Shankman then. Uh, Professor Mark Lamont Hill, thank you so much.